Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use and control the PWM function in the new TT RGB Plus 2.0 software. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at how to control the PWM function in the new TTRGB Plus 2.0 software. This is actually a new addition, which has been something which we've been asking for for a very long time. So I'm super pleased to see that it's actually been integrated. Although there's some people that's still not entirely sure how it all works. So I figured I'd do a quick video to show you how it works, how to set it up and how to get the best out of your TTRGB Plus compatible fans. So this is gonna be mostly for people that have got either things like the Tough Fan 12 RGB, the Swafan EX12s, uh, Swafan 14s, etc. Basically, anything which has the TT RGB Plus logo on here is going to be compatible with the new RGB controller. So, if you've bought a set recently, you'll get a controller such as this one. So, this actually controls everything, including your RGB lighting and also the PWM and speed control. Now, this can connect up to five ports, and you can actually daisy chain these modules. There, there is a switch selector on the back and you can just change the dip switches to add more into the daisy chain and loop up various different devices. Fortunately, with the new SWAF fans, you can actually connect up to three of them on one single channel. So potentially you can bulk these out with a lot of fans and a lot of other devices. Not only fans, you can use things like the pumps, even uh, some other bizarre things from Thermaltake, such as addressable RGB lighting strips, etc., etc. There's a ton of different things which we can take a look at later in the RGB Plus software. So that is basically a kind of introduction. Essentially what you're gonna get is a fan such as this with what looks like a USB type connector on there, but this is just sending your digital RGB and also your PWM signals to the fans. If you've got the SWAF fans, then you'll have the kind of magnetic connector like this. So that's enough of an intro. Let's get onto the computer and show you how it all works and talk a little bit more about the PWM control. Okay, so this is the Thermaltake RGB plus 2.0 software. Uh, we've got it installed already. If you need to download it, I'll put some links in the video description. You can go to uh, ttrgbplus.thermaltake.com and go through and it talks about the TTRGB Plus ecosystem. As you can see there, so there's various devices which can be connected with it. So keyboards, mice, mouse pads, desks, chairs, fans, you name it. There's a, a lot of stuff going on. But essentially anything which has got the uh, TTRGB Plus logo on it, can be integrated. You can do all these kind of crazy things with your lighting effects, etc. But we're not going to be concentrating too much on that. We're mostly looking at fan control today. So in order to download it, just uh, head down to the bottom and you can go to this section here. So just download version two. Version one uh, you can use, but version two I feel has personally got uh, better functionality. So anyway, download that, install it, and then you'll have this. This is the Thermaltake RGB Plus software. And the first thing you want to do is to go into the connect section and this is going to show up your control hubs now in order to work out which fans are which all you need to do is click on the individual header and your fans will actually change color so if i click on that one there that is our rear fan which now hopefully you can see from the uh, the visual that is now illuminated red if we click on this one here you can see the front ones have gone red and if we click on our other hub we can click on this one and you can now see that the fans at the top have gone red. So it basically just tells you which fans you're actually controlling in the lighting software. So that makes things a little bit easier and also for naming, etc. And if you go into lighting, then if you get to save your changes, you can go in, do select all and change all your colors, etc. should you want to. But we don't wanna do that today. We are looking at actual fan speed control. So here we are in the My PC section and you've got your PC information, etc. So you can see your processors, temperature. This one won't register fan speed because we don't have anything actually connected to the CPU fan connector. But yeah, we'll explain more about that later. You've got your graphics card there. It's telling the temperatures, etc. Which actually does bear some relevance because that is going to be useful in a minute. Basically other things there. You go into fan speed. And this is where we can choose our fan speeds and also the setup. So at the moment, we've got our SWAF fan EX RGBs and it knows which fan it is because we've already dragged those on. And actually I should have showed you that. So if you go back into connect, when you click on these at the bottom, you've got these options there. So depending on what fan you're using, you just drag it into the appropriate header. So if you're using maybe a ring quad, you can just throw that up on there and then it knows the settings of that fan, RPMs, etc. 
If you don't want them, just drag them away and they disappear. So back to my PC, we'll see the changes there. Back into fan speed. So this is gonna be for the front fans. So these are the ones which are actually set as intake. You can name these, just type in whatever you want them to be just so you know what they are a little bit easier. And these are grouped as well. So because the SWA fans are magnetically connected, although it appears as one RPM, it is actually all three of the fans. With the rear one, that is just a single fan. So again, just showing the single RPM, you get the general idea. And this one here I've named as AIO because that is the one which is actually on the radiator at the top. And as you can see, the RPM for the AIO is slightly higher than it is for the actual case fans. There is a good reason for that, just to try and keep the temperatures a little bit cooler. And also we don't need the front ones to be spinning as fast to keep the noise levels down. So let's say we wanna change this setting. So if we go into advanced options, so this is for our front intake fans. And now you can see we've got some options here. So currently it's set to customize, which is the new section, although you can leave them on normal. So this will be basically a static speed. So at this point, silent in performance, there's no slider there. So it makes no difference at all. And also this is grayed out at the bottom. So this is not being taken into account. So all we've got here is a simple slider control from zero, which is basically silent, as you can probably now hear. And if you want to, you can set them to 100%. So depending on what you're doing, you can choose to set a static speed, which for some people may be absolutely fine. So let's turn those back down to silent. Now the other option we've got is PWM control. So this is gonna be using the baked in PWM hardware kind of performance levels. And again, now we've got the performance and silent adjustment, but we don't have a zero to 100 because that is now being controlled by the software and the PWM controller built in. So they're still gonna be spinning very slowly when the processor is not really under any load, but as things ramp up, if it's in performance mode, they'll go anywhere up to kind of 2000 RPM on these particular fans. So you can move this slider to see what is gonna be beneficial to you. Now at the moment, it's not gonna change the fan speeds at all because we're still in idle. We're not doing anything strenuous on the CPU. So you can play around with those and work out what is best for you. Now, normal and PWM were the pr two previous options that you had, which I feel were a little bit limiting. So now we've got the new customize option. So if we go into customize, we've now still got silent standard performance and full speed options. But what we've also got now is RPM control. And also we've got this 10 point slider or scale. So you can also choose what you're monitoring. So for the front intake fans, potentially, because you want to monitor your graphics card, you could set it to GPU and then you can move your sliders around to make your graphics card run cooler or to give it more air coming into the system, nice cool air to keep your graphics card cool. Obviously, there is gonna be an increase in noise should you do that, but certainly you can if you want to. Or alternately, you can use it to monitor the system temperature, which generally is gonna pick up things like your VRMs or one of the Southbridge sensors, depending on the motherboard. So again, you can control those how you see fit. You can make a nice curve there, and you can change these basically however you see fit. So if you don't want your fans to ever go to 100%, you can just drag the slider right down so even if the CPU is getting super hot or the system's getting super hot, it will still never go over about 60% of the rated speed. So this is all pretty cool. So for this one, the front, I'm gonna rely on the CPU temperature and I normally set a curve. So we're somewhere around 70 degrees is where I want the fans to really kick in and start cooling the system down. But when it's idling or maybe just spiking around temperatures, then because these fans are pretty good, you don't need them to ramp up too much at all. So we've got a very gentle curve there until we get to around about 60 degrees Celsius, and then we're gonna shoot up as it hits towards 70. So that is my preferred curve. Again, you can set these however you want to monitor your CPU, your GPU, or whatever. So once you're happy with that, you can click on save at the top there, that'll save your settings. Again, for the rear fan, because this is just a single fan, this is just our exhaust. So again, you can set it however you want to, Ideally for an exhaust, probably CPU is the best or maybe even system. The choice again is entirely up to you. But because you've got it in customized, you can take full control of your fan speeds and make them as quiet, as noisy or as efficient as you actually want to. So there you go. That is basically the uh, overview of how to control your fan speeds in the Thermaltake TT RGB Plus 2.0 software. Okay, so there you go. There is how to control the fans using the new PWM function and also the customize function in your TTRGB 
Plus 2.0 software. I'm so glad they've added it. Previously, I'll be honest with you, the TT RGB Plus software was great for lighting, but when it came to fan control, it just felt there was something lacking. But now, now they've added that in there so you can customize the fan speeds to your heart's content, I think it's come a long, long way and it's massively overdue. So there you go. If you've got any comments or questions, please let us know in the comments section below. If you need more in-depth help, then please join our Discord and we'd be glad to try and go through your individual settings and get things set up right for you. And also, if you want to find out any more about the uh, TT RGB Plus software and also the fans, etc., and the ecosystem in general, I'll leave some links in the video description. I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.